yeah, I'll just start there. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, whoop, no, that's going to continue from uh, the weird save I did at the beginning. Uh, so I tried figuring out how uh, how certain things work in this game. Didn't work out too well, uh, my experimentation, but I will say that... Just a moment. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Oh my gosh, I'm not saying that first one. <laughs> Good day, ma'am. Is everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Uh, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why didn't you use the phone so badly? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. You have more important things to worry about. Is your husband some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. Well, I guess, considering your name. Uh, what's cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Huh. Maybe you should convince her... Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. You're an enthusiastic idiot, but you're still an idiot. Dang it. I want to know everything about cryptids. Living, extinct, marine, land. Bring it on. We don't have time for Cryptozoology 101. Let's get back to work, shall we? Uh, well, tell me about morale. His looks, character, relationship. Oh dear. I'm not sure where to begin. Well, what does he look like so we can identify him if we see him? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. It's always a challenge to describe a person you know best in the world. Well, if we were to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame, and he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. Hmm. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. 
How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. How'd you two meet? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident, and he just divorced. We hit it off, and, well, here we are. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. Uh, I think I have all the information I could need. I hope I've been useful. Well, what's this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could this be it? Oh. Uh, who's the Gary person? Oh, sweetie. It's nothing like that. Gary's as loyal as they come. I'd trust him with my husband's life any day. Just so you know, the uh, water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Word around... Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Probably some technical problem. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know that you're here and when or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. Maybe we could now convince her? There's there we go. No point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, uh, I'd like to hear some of the cryptids that you've studied. Could you at least tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. A cryptid extravaganza? I like the sound of that. And I don't. Just one. Or he'll be disappointed in you. Ooh, tough choice there. Is that cryptid on the pen? What? Is that a cryptid on the pen that you gave me? Yes, it's the kind green ape, half boar story, half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. War? Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow, it's saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And there was something about an undiscovered, undiscovered species of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own, just like your partners. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. Uh... The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Oh, 
No, I didn't mean to imply that Saolites are inferior to us in many ways. You are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. Huh? A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today? This what has been um, educational. Sadly, we uh, need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. Uh, tell me more about the rare ins insect that your husband was looking for, for instance. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I, I want to hear about the insect. What else? It's a phasmid, technically, but... Ah, yes. Phasmatodia. A diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs, leaves, that sort of thing. Ghost insects. Colloquially. Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting... Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insulindian coast. Hence its name, the Insulindian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers. I knew it. We're gonna be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. It's not made up, officer. I can assure you. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. What makes you think the phasmid is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They, they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have right now? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly, and they didn't even know what they were looking at. So is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Is it valuable then? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. But does it have cool powers? Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years, centuries even. So what's so special about it? Oh dear, I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. I think that's all for now, ma'am. Wow. So someone's been a little boring. What do you mean? Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. But I like brown. Of course you do. And maybe some black shoes or a pristine white shirt to go with that. It's official. My lord's copo type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Wait, this will be my corporal type now? Yes, the type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste, a class even, a nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. Do I even know what the benefits are? I'm still trying... Oh. Did it actually finish? I think it did. Oh, right. Uh, let me see if I could find... There it is. So I have seven points in sorry cop and four in boring cop. So I guess because I got those four points, it has uh, shot me all the way over there.
Uh, no need. Let's uh, keep that announcement on the standby for now. Good, good. Of course. To outright declare yourself something does seem a bit too interesting now, doesn't it? I won't trouble you any further. Okay, uh... Yeah, I did see that like this now opened. Let me handle this. Detective skin color. Oh. Still black, as you can see. Do you have any more keen eyed observations? Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. She's right. You're basically an epidermochromatic police officer. What? Uh Oh, you're the gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. Oh. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy. You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. Okay. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Why are you so aggressive all of a sudden? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Yeah, I mean, like, what are the union's plans, actually? Look, a comedian. Do your job, ask your questions, then get out of Martinez. Oh, <laughs> I didn't read the other part of that. Whoops. Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. Yeah? Uh... Okay, let's talk to Titus, then. Bowl, spin it. Oh. Okay. This is where you say your bed. A broad shouldered man points at you with his beer can. Detective. Don't say anything just yet, I guess. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Do not let their squeals disturb your serenity. These are but simple peasants, sire. We need to talk about the man hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You're sure taking your time. Waiting for him to get ripe and pretty for you, huh? Oh, he was a real pretty boy by now. Real hot stuff. Letting out that pretty boy smell. Time to go to work in the shit factory! Easy, boys. These janitors have a hell of a job cut out for them. I mean, I wouldn't go in there for a million. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, 
they are ready to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right. Boot size 44. Blonde man in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Sitting on his right. Standard working boots. Size 45 or 46. Eldest in the room. Probably mid 50s. Smoker. Quiet. Across at the other table. Hobnailed working boots. Size 43. Gang tattoos. Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late 30s, early 40s. And then, standard working boot. Steel reinforced toes. Size 46. The big dick. Wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips. Rugby cap. Fingerless gloves. And numerous scars. A little under 40. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44. 40 something, non alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint. Is that a plectrum? Where? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Oh. Let's call this one the musician. And the little guy? Size 41. With the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy. Boot size 46. Deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor and you could easily exceed 220. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. One of them is missing. Exactly. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? I found the eighth set of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth one? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth Hardy boy. There's seven of us, and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth Hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking, and we think she could maybe. This person Glenn wants to hire. He really respects her. She? So there's an eighth Hardy, and it's a Hardy girl? Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So let me get this straight. There is an eighth Hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private Hardy Boys matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And you're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth Hardy sooner or later. Did the man hanged up backyard? Did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Okay. So why is there a shipping container belt around the man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes. Why is that? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. 
There's a catch. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. Four, seven, together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. And it was you that called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? What the heck kind of... <laughs> I'm not saying that last one. Holy crap. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I mean, you're the one addressing me, so I guess you give the commands. That's right, asshole. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No, we did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes paper, fills out forms, the others can't read. But on that night, they all acted as one man. Then when did the hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Rizzy. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long have you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, Al. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No, I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Then I guess I'll ask why you killed him. Why? Cause he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary? That was it? And he stepped out alive. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Right, but what do you. No, I should actually, like, ask a clarifying question of how did he know he was Special Forces? Because one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm on these goddamn Special Forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some r and song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some kind of animal. Sire. The tale is true. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Conceptualization, I don't need you talking about karaoke right now. I'm trying to... <laughs> okay, besides crimes against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. 
Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. It'd kill us all if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Was this the same girl who was... As you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Right, but who? This is a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting the name. That's a Martinez matter, and I'm not discussing it with you clowns. <sighs> so what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get him beaten. rent -a cop So that's what this is about. He doesn't see yeah, no. sequels. Yeah, that's impossible. I'm not going to do that one. Uh, actually, I'm going to take off now. Those are men in overalls toting guns and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Okay. No. No, 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 I'm not doing that one. Oh. I don't think I was able to talk to this guy earlier. Because they still can't. Okay, let's do a uh, hard save right there. Okay, it looks like I need to just get a little bit higher in drama. Uh, 
I thought there was another bottle down there. For a second I thought there was a new guy over here. Um Okay. Uh what is the next thing we can do? I think Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? Uh got any smokes on you? Nope. Don't smoke. Hmm. Some of the other drivers do, though. There's still a few around, waiting for the jam to disperse. Or waiting for this. Yep. Nothing wrong with that statement. Your senses have nothing to add. You left the ask around elsewhere. <sighs> Dang it, perception. Okay, I'll ask around you then. Also, check the kiosk down the street. Frit. With three T's. Revishaw's weird. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Well, let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revishol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Fair enough. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Yeah, I guess that's it for now. Jamais vu derealization. Jamais vu, the opposite of déjà vu, not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now, that's the feeling you've been having, and for who knows how long. You should go and ask. Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. machine stands your bottles clunk into them do you know what you should do with that money kiddo you should buy more alcohol enter the endless cycle of consumption um is this about the questions again because i don't really know anything Colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Here you go, mister.
Hello, wandering man. How can I help you? I just realized I was still muted. Okay. Okay, that door's still locked. Wait. First things first. Uh, I actually want to get up here and attempt the jump. It may not seem like it, but I actually want to attempt the jump at least once. I should have done that yesterday, but I didn't want to accidentally like mess up too much in like a single day. I was already running like we did a six hour stream and I didn't want to do too many things. Huh. It's the woman from before? Okay. Let's climb up here. Because I do want to try to get this coat, because this coat is uh, something I used a lot in the uh, in my original playthrough of the game, and I kind of wanted to try to get to it again. So I'm going to hard save again in case something bad happens. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Okay, so I need to boost my uh, savoir-faire um, a little bit so I can uh, try to see it's going into that okay so I'm getting a minus two somewhere and it's of course it's my pants um yeah because look at these pants like Uh, I guess also my shoes. Uh, do I have anything that is that can boost it? Because unfortunately, okay. A tarpaulin cloak is still what? caught on the railing. Manana, what are you doing here? Okay, 42%. This is actually a little bit better. Ah, dang it. No, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up. Right, I can't do that now. I will. I'll make the jump next time. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained a muscle there. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna load the point from down here. Actually, I'm going to take a uh, minor break and I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so... The dented yellow mailbox. Because I didn't... Oh, I have to... Talk to the characters again. Still here. Stuck in this damn jam. Nope. Some of the other drivers do, though. Yep. Yeah. You could also check the key. Ah, man. But... Those... We have a credit. Not me, man. No way. I... Look, man. We wouldn't say he's lying. Jamais vu. Derealization. Okay. I'm gonna need like two more spots. Hmm. Yeah, my problem is is that I would The tear machines, your bottles clunk. Do you know what Um Wait is this a I just realized. I now have fifteen dollars. <laughs> Sorry, real. I have fifteen whole real. Uh I believe the track pants are fifteen. Doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? Kuno's fuck gimp's got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. Look at him. Fucking gross hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. What do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea. Rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. You threw it into the sea. Oh, sorry, I was talking a little bit low. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gates. What do you mean? Yeah, cock in boots. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. He means Manana, the laid back striker at the gates. Oh, you mean Manana? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? And you're telling me this out of the kindness of your heart? Yeah, Kuno's doing charity today. Kuno day. Kuno feels sorry for you two loser pigs. Kuno's doing pity now. Still, seems suspicious. He may have it in for that guy. Or you may be paranoid. That is also a possibility, sire. There's contusions all over his body. Did you do that? Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? Hmm. He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. It's a bruise. I'm talking about the marks your stones left on the corpse. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. Uh, more of this later then. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Lost. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno. You already know that slow shit. But how can I forget? Kuno thinks you have. Kuno, stop being nice to the pig. Step away from Kuno, fat ass creep. He's 
Doxy. Don't be telling Kuno what Kuno can do. What else you want, Pigman? <sighs> Kuno doesn't fucking. I was trying to get him to give me the pants, but I guess he's already done with them, and I can't get them back. That sucks. Oh. Hmm. Fuck does Kuno care? Uh, I found your shack out back. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the Fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's up with the tube, a tube of Magnusolam, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. Well, I, I mean, it's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig! Don't do mag! You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die! Uh, what's up with the pig head in there, by the way? How's that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Like some kind of musician? Yeah. Kuno plays on snuff radio. Fucks pigs. Lies. Fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. Is that my coat up there? Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. Yet, yeah, that conclusively explains how the coat got up there. Could I get to the harbor from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Is that easy? Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants. Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants. That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Hmm. Legendary Empathy. Kuno doesn't fuck. I already put the two points that I could possibly put into it. And I said I needed the one point in drama. This is the uh, Plaisance one down there. Uh, okay.
Okay. What was it? So, I need the pants from him. So, I need high empathy. What do I have on me that's making my empathy... Oh! My empathy is actually going up. Okay. Now this is something I'm not usually going to do. But I'm going to actually try to get his uh his thing to go off. It's a very low score. I kind of want more empathy, but I don't know if there is an item in the game that will actually get me empathy. I'm getting a plus one from the ledger. I could get a plus two because of a winter scarf. Oh, all the way at the end of the game. It's... <laughs> yeah, there, there's no way I could get the plus two at the end of the game. I'm trying to figure out Hmm. He's on your crime scene. Oh my gosh. And he's been I did not just roll double ones. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. You've seen all kind of things throwing stones here. Want to help a bust a murder? 
fucking mentally handicapped. Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see. Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Hmm. Kuno doesn't fucking... Okay. So, uh... Interesting bit of logic. I need to get into the back room. I need to get in the back room of the whirling rag so I can get the coat that's there, so I can get the pants that he has, so I can make that jump. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Kuno told me you you were supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had a good on his promise. His to promise? Get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me, pardon the choice of words, not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of jam rock. Serves me right for doing menial fool's work. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. So what did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. So, helmet, cuirass, gauntlets, and boots. What about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I do. I'm ambitious. I'm going to find all the pieces. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them, but okay. Let's find all of it. It's implied. He finds it unlikely that you will succeed in this. A mesquite's epic then, all across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. Yeah. But I feel bad that Kuno used us to scare you. It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He thinks, not yet. Better to get this business out of the way. Sweeter then. Thank you for your cooperation, I guess. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. He is sincerely grateful. He is not tracking down pieces of armor right now. Good talking to you. Return and confront him. <laughs> Might as well. Uh, I think the biggest problem that I have right now is I don't want to confront the big guy up there. Uh, because I know that I can't cross the gap without save scumming. And it's going to be really annoying. It's going to cross without his pants. Yeah, I talked to Manana about the armor. He said the thank you. Wasn't too keen on chasing down that armor anyway. Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? He looks slightly confused. Yeah, I would too. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno 
I sent you to rough some people up? Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. Good idea. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're gonna remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Okay, nothing has actually shifted the uh, bar on that. Then not even close to leveling up. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... Yeah. Okay. So, the thing is, is that because of the way that I want to play this game, I need to get this jacket. Problem is, is that I can't get the jacket normally, I have to actually, like, I have to do it like this, which is a bit annoying, I will admit, but I really need that jacket. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed Wait, it backed by the physical instrument? What? What do you mean backed by physical instrument? Okay, we'll move, we'll move. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. Even fifty eight percent. Once again, backed by physical instrument. So let's see if we can do it this time. Is still caught on the railing. Oh my gosh, I was only giving myself this second chance. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Close your eyes, let your senses take in the world around you. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. He's so on the money, Bratan! Just imagine yourself dual wielding a bottle and a flaming cigarette whilst airborne. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete. He's so on the money, but as the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive, alert, capable. Must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Oh my gosh. So glad. There we go. So, this is a strict upgrade to our Disco Blazer, because it keeps the uh, Esprit de Corps, but also gives us plus one the Shivers. Ah! The pants back on. Ah... Uh, Plus one suggestion is kind of nice, but we could technically just get rid of this blazer. Plus one the conceptualization. Um, yeah. 
uh, interfacing with the gloves is still important. Uh, okay. Nice. Okay, let's uh, head through this door. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Hmm. This radio is emitting a strange buzzing sound. La Fumi, Volume 1, Number 4. Huh. Standard office file cabinet. Someone left the coffee machine on. Dark liquid in the pot almost seems sentient. Thanks, Inland Empire. This is a Dewey typewriter. All name is on the back. Every worker is a member of the board is written on top of the flyers. The bottom, the union logo, logo and demand democracy. The Jardin? The Jardin. 52. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river, a little more than a decade after the war, an eastern bank is already fully renovated. Hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This park postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Nice. What was this? The leading intellectual organ of Martinez communism offers a radical Mazovian perspective on a range of contemporary issues. Cover features a stylized portrait of the light king Freisel with a pair of white antlers growing out of his head. The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Frieser. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Why antlers? Because white antlers are one of the symbols of communism. They represent a society in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. But why Frisel? Because Frisel was incompetent, foolish and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. To your disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International development, Kunst und Kultur, and local concerns. Just inside the cover, there's also an editor's note. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal à la Fumé. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turn to smoke under communism. But, like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going à la fumée. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon-feed their readers reassuring drivel, La Fumé is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Only four issues in, and it sounds like they've already alienated their readership. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, Please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. Kim, I think this might be a communist magazine. What do you expect? It was laying around the office of the Debardeurs Union. They're probably bankrolling the thing. You flip back to the front of the magazine. 
the table of contents unfolds before you. Let's see what they mean by local concerns. Unsurprisingly, much of this section is taken up with articles declaring unqualified support for the dock workers' strike. You skim the headlines. Paint the harbor red and white. Martinez tames the wild pines. A city in revolt. First we take Martinez, then we take La Delta. Finally, there's a brief article by the writer, G. Martin, accusing the owner of the Cape Side Apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. To be fair, uh, charging rent to live somewhere is actually pretty outrageous. The writer G. Martin remarks dryly that capitalists love wealth redistribution so long as it's only redistributed upward. It's true, the rentiers have been bleeding you dry. You really ought to find your own place one of these days. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. Uh... I guess international developments? This section includes a long, tedious critique of the latest round of free trade negotiation between the EPIS nations and the Free State of Semenine. You also skip over an article about heavy fuel oil smuggling along the Mes Messina border, something about bear wrestling in Samara, book riots in Yugograd. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bear wrestling. Flip back to that. Okay, what was that about the bear wrestling? What the heck? It seems to be part of a new public fitness initiative in the People's Republic of Samara, SRV, devised and promoted by none other than President Kenijinsky himself. Ah, oh, President Kennedy. According to this extremely credulous account, Uncle Sport, as he's affectionately known to his people, has recently decreed bear wrestling the national sport of the SRV. Okay, tell him more. Okay, so when it says bear wrestling, does that mean two bears? Each, uh, two bears wrestle each other, or...? Of course not. The article makes plain that this is man on bear, or in some cases, woman on bear competition. Two competitors, one ring, five rounds, or until incapacitation. According to the SRV's Ministry of Information, the program has been a tremendous success. Public support stands at 87%, and youth obesity and alcoholism rates are down 12% and 7%, respectively. What? This is the SRV we're talking about. If you think those are the real numbers, there's probably a guy who wants to sell you a bridge in La Shirt. Not, not sure I trust these numbers, yeah. What are you, a statistician? Did the moral intern send you on a fact-finding mission? This is the SRV party line, comrade. Do you think that there's a chance our case will take us to SRV at some point? The Samaran People's Republic? No, I should expect not. Why do you ask? I was thinking it might be fun to see a bear fight. They are quite the spectacle, as I understand. I've heard they make the people in the front rows wear plastic sheets. Oh. On account of the blood, you see. Oh, no, no, I got that. You flip back to the front of the magazine. It, it takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that Kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. Why they decided to title this one section in Volda is beyond you. It evokes a sense of recognition and fellowship among those privileged enough to understand. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as C.S. The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A. 
made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. The actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. Oh wait, okay, let's see what these communists have to say about tip top. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season, maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colorful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about all the politically problematic aspects of tip top tourney. Where to even start? For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships, and then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. So, all of it, basically. So, who wrote all this stuff? Oddly enough, this article has two bylines. Nasteb and Kalada Bernal and Exilus Buka. There's no way those are real names. Wait, why are they not real names? Have you ever met anyone named Exilus? Come on, they're plainly pseudonyms. Well, what's so bad about the sponsorships? Under capitalism, the article says, every pursuit has its price. Every pleasure, even one as elemental as the joy of racing others around a track, is reduced to an advertising opportunity. Thus, the so-called tournée becomes a competition between increasingly meaningless brand signifiers. Your discount laundry detergent racing against a pack of Astra cigarettes, or even a fritter. Right, but when you see them crash... And that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise of random, spectacular violence, audiences would quickly lose interest. At the end of the day, it's the destruction of these 750,000 real races that you're really watching for. Um... Okay, this is actually a really interesting thing, because I've actually heard people talk about, like, uh, talk about the reasons why they would like NASCAR, um, and one of the, one of the things that I actually talked about when they were bringing it up was the fact that, basically, NASCAR has, like, anime-level drama between the, between the racers, but the actual races itself are pretty boring. So I could completely understand why why someone would, someone would sit there and go, no, nah, I could be in it for the racing. No, no, you aren't. The only time anyone ever talks about NASCAR is when someone does something incredibly stupid or incredibly deadly. Like uh, the guy who rode up on the wall and then said, oh yeah, I saw this in a video game and I thought that it would work. You see, one cannot avoid the conclusion that Tip Top Tourney is simply the apotheosis of spectacular entertainment under capitalism. Kim, did you know Tip Top Tourney is actually in... Or a fantastic ritual of capitalistic destruction? No, I had no idea. I can safely say the thought had never crossed my mind, Detective. Okay. I wonder what else is really just a metaphor for life under capitalism. I'm sure most things are, if the young men who wrote this article are to be believed. If I had to wager... I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. I take whatever they write with a large grain of salt. Considering Kim is also kind of like a uh, a guy who actually really likes motor vehicles, I could totally see him being the type to just watch it for the vehicles and see how hard someone could like push a uh, 
an engine like past its mechanical limit. I could totally understand that. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I've been waiting this whole game to come across glasses. Oh my gosh. Okay, so these glasses uh, give me a plus one to visual calculus, but a minus one to drama, meaning that I won't discern lies too often, but it also won't provoke me to lying. These were stuffed away in a union... A dock worker's union's office. They're perfect for scribbling down paperwork when the sun tries to get in your eye. Good for staring down subs um, suspects, too. Uh, okay. One last thing in this office. Looks like is uh, this little door right here. On second glance. Someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Oh, wow, that's convenient. Let's look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably, the head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. Maybe. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Yeah, I was looking at that too. What is so special about this borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood? Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everard's plants. Sweet office floor. More banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Okay. Did we actually keep the note? Doesn't look like it. I think we just left it back in the place. Like, just in case. Okay. Oh, this door is locked. It cannot be opened from this side without a pass card. Because you have no choice but to talk to the union leader this side. 
Okay. So this was the door that we had to get through to get over here. All around you, great machines and, and quintessence. White pine trees are painted onto the screen covering like a forest under snow. Oh, this just fully goes across. I don't want to go here just yet. That smoker up there could be a witness. Was three packs worth of cigarette butts? Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent filzer. Look at all this f free money that's just l left here. Uh... Yeah, this looks like it's the, uh... Part of the apartment complex. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads Rene Arnaud. So this is where Rene works. I'm gonna look around. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot over here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabinier uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memories. Why did you take that picture of Rene? Well, I'm going to ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Well, I kind of want to know what his deal is. If he's up here, he could see down to... Maybe he saw the murder, you know? Can I not actually descend right there? Guess not. Hmm. Summer of 91. Ask Renee about the photo. We will do that later. Oh. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. How hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Was this me? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Still not completely... Hmm. This is really sad. It must have been miserable. Yes. This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. Yeah. Judging by everything we've kind of learned about the character that has still yet to be named in the game at this point, technically, uh, Control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Mush on Aret off. With a loud
loud grind. The crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk. The crane places the container down. This crane was built with a purpose, which has now been fulfilled. To move this container. What's inside the container? Who can say? All you know is, it's special. I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. I guess we should just turn it off then. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. Hmm. Huh. Faded industrial lettering on the platform is calcumed. So, you might be wondering why I'm saving right now. It's because I want to actually see if this will work. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think something special about this container. Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe, I can't tell. I think we should investigate further. You do? Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? Well, it was in the middle of hanging from the crane. You just picked one up because you wanted to interact with a cargo container. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. No reply. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left. The lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Using rhetoric, persuade to op persuade the door to open. I've been erratic yet thorough, and I've been in the world for two days now. So what it's saying is that if I don't roll a 12, it will not open. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because I'm getting... Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? I'm using my body over... Using my body over wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. Okay. Okay, so basically, if we ruled perfect on rhetoric, the door would open. Uh... If you don't know, that is where the my uh, last playthrough ended, was uh, forcing that door open and finding out what's inside. Shipping yard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Oh, more change. Another dollar. Speaker tower is silent. There's work to organize in the yard below. Oh, box. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. Oh, it's locked. Another dollar. Industrial sized thermos. It smells like burnt coffee. Banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Everything is red. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. 
The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisund on Moonbi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. The tiny man does not. is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice you. Hi! Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? What is it with you people in scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Uh, you're from Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. That's a red, meaning that we won't be able to uh, try it again if we ask. It's a 50-50 chance, so I'm going to back up for now. Sure, mister. About what? Where is everyone? Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. I see. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. <laughs> we haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Evrar is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. What trouble was that? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everard telling them to take some time off. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details, well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Okay, let... Too rowdy. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Are you the Leo that wrote the same note to make more banners? Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Oh, what was that about the borscht? Oh, yes. I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dog fighters. Alcohol, however. What do you mean by taking his, this soup to the men? Is it for the striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Who makes it? Oh, the whirlings cook. 
He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grag. Looks like the borscht is spiked. Well, I'm gonna go look into it. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellet. But everyone calls me Leo. Yeah, I think we uh, kind of skipped this piece of dialogue to find out his name. I'm like Mr. Ebrach's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Ebrach is away. <laughs> I see. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douay Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. They're my real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Who is this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. Law school? Could she be talking about the union fixer? A.K.A. the gardener. So, this is the union fixer you're talking about? The, the gardener out back? Looks like it. I'm not sure what a fixer is, but she is a real nice girl. Smart as a whip, too. Telling the gardener you know her name might throw her off. Perhaps something to consider later. What's in the container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Tell you. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. We just want to know where you could find the man. Oh, Mr. Everard is where he always is. In his office, of course. Okay, I'm off. I have to go talk to him. Bye bye now. Okay, that went well. Okay, when we ha when we get back, we have to talk about the borscht. Now, Kim, don't don't judge me, but I'm gonna check to see if uh, I have more stats on this door. <laughs> oh, Kalsun means white fjord in Iran. Oh my God. Before the cargo container, its drawer has not lessened since you were last here. If uh, anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Okay. Again, I I save scummed that door for like I think three and a half hours because I hadn't put a single point into a uh, rhetoric. But since I'm doing a uh, very pro-communist run, I kind of wanted to uh, put that first point into rhetoric. Oh, giant thermoses. Stairs made out of pallets. Okay. This is going to be the part that I kind of am going to scum a little bit on. Because Everard is mean. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk, 
He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to the tiny chair that's opposite of him. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. What? No, I reckon. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Oh my gosh. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Oh, uh, this is going to go so badly. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Gives you a sly wink. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically large. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Wait, you know Kurt? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Okay, I guess I won't thank him for it. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or... No. I've got integrity. You can't be telling me that game. I have shown less than integrity in this game. Cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure... If that's what's cool nowadays. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. How do you know about my lost gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Okay. So my composure is taking a hit from this, so I have to actually boost composure. 
I I'm sitting in the chair and it's hurting. I did take the novelty check, but I didn't thank him for it, so it cancels out. So what I'm gonna do because this was the one I was actually like I was actually like wondering what it was. Again, I don't usually do this for like anything, but for Everart, I am going to do it on because this is important. Before you is a, with great effort. He's Welcome, Mr. I'm Ever. I'd offer you my. He looks extremely. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you. Oh wait, I forgot to check to see if uh, I was actually like losing any boost to composure. I'm actually getting a plus one to composure. Plus one to um, reaction speed as well. Oh, my shoes. Okay. Okay. Plus one to suggestion. I don't think that's going to help me as much. I'm getting a plus one to composure. Still a bit away. Oh, I'm actually getting a plus one to pain threshold. I did not notice that. Again, I'm pretty far away from another skill point. I don't have any outfits that can help me. So I'm going to just have to go in with pure, like, verbal, like... Behind a large desk. He looks up from his work. Not the least bit with great effort. Welcome, Miss. I'm Ever. I'd offer you my. Okay. Let's get back ahead. through the. Whatever. Forget about that. What's with this? Please, Mr. De it's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. I don't say it's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no tight in the volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Dang it. I needed a plus one to volition. Interesting. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union... The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable... Oh, uh, but this should... T it should be sufficient... Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Yes, I... With a grin, he points to the check again. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. I'm actually gonna, instead of leaving the check, be nice to him and not take it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection. Thanks for referring to it like that game. Uh, sinks further into his chair. Now. I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. You're lost. His right. The world is when he said, don't worry. He I know ev it's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children I'm still in the chair. With it right. right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Okay, so all the stuff that I did didn't actually like change the way it is so let's try it one more time 
If not, then I'll just go back and pick the exact same one that I did the first time to make it more even. Before you is a walrus of a man with great effort. Welcome, Mr. I'm M. I'd offer you my hat. He looks extreme. You go ahead. Whatever. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? Please, Mr. Dubois. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. Very well. I, too. Should you find... You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable... So tell me. The chair? Oh, by the way, this should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient. Hey, that's 25 real. Okay, let's, let's pick that final one. Think of all the stuff. Yes, I... With a grin, he points to the chair. Okay, okay. Now. His slug-like. The world is... When he said, don't... I know every... It's not like you left it loaded. Okay. You didn't lose a loaded gun. So all we have to do is basically... Playing with it right now, pointing it into Got their it. own Load. One last time. So again, I'm going to pick the exact same stuff that I picked the first time... The kind of uh, get back to where we originally were. I'm not going to be able to uh, get past him without high volition. Welcome, Miss. I'm. M I'd offer you my hat. He looks extreme. You go ahead. Whatever he has, his forget about that. What's with? Please, Miss. It's nothing. Yes. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are reason. So tell me. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most. Uh, by the this should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover. Hey. That's 25. Yes, I... With a grin, he points to the check again. Is there any... No. Cool. Now... His sl... The world... It when he said, don't worry. I know. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded... Okay, let's gun. try. Local children are... God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun. And those children are going to shoot themselves with it. No, I'm not about to cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. Keep sliding down the chair like a cello shot. That is a weird. That is a weird way to phrase that game. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. I kind of want to say the top one. Nah, I'm as good as get, Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Okay, we're going to take it from the top. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy. But I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy. Honestly. I like how the how them are I am, I'm not taking <laughs> quotes a lie, uh, or no comment. I'm gonna just say that I am. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, 
because you don't want to ruin me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... I, too, am surprised at the resilience and athleticism of this tool I've been provided with. Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition, and I salute both your initiative and your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Okay, so you call me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hang of Corpse called you, Harry. So that really is my name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. I mean, my his memory is a bit hazy. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. So let me get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. I don't feel... I feel like a Dubois, but not quite a Harry. Something longer. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus. But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois. A real man's name. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. What kind of a cop does it say I am? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. I'm sorry? Yes. You seem to be, a lot of the time, but right now there's no reason to be. Let loose a little. Be you. He's probably just making a guess based on your recent activity in Martinez. Where did you get the folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. So our one point in drama is actually making this work? We now have an 80% chance because now Kim is suspect. Everard's large hands are covering Oh my gosh. On his face says, There's no I way. Everything about you, Harry. There's no way I got a double one on that. Oh my gosh. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Like, again, I didn't want to do this as much, but this is Everard. And as you can tell, I kind of don't like the guy. <laughs> Before you, with great effort, he Welcome, I'm, I don't Again, same choices. 
You go ahead. Whatever. Forget about that. What's with... Please, Miss... It's nothing. Yes. That's... Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are reasonable. So tell me. The chair... Uh, by this should take care. It should be sufficient. Hey, that's 25 rear. Is there anything? No. Cool. Now... His... The world is... When he said, don't worry. He actually meant, be very worried. I know, it's not like you left it loaded. You didn't- God, you're sweating. Mr. Dubois. What is this? I almost Mr. got Dubois. it though, that was pretty high. That was pretty high, what I almost got it. Is he trying to- Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. Don't be dramatic. What an odd- Okay, enough. Quick. It is about time to stop embarrassing you. What? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell. You've hurt me. I trust you. He's hiding. Thank you for your... You... T None taken. Did we have anything else to do here? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man you... Yes, yes. Anyway, I assure you, of course. That's what the... My gods. I think the odds are... It might be a good idea. I assure you. I have a big... I'm sure you have... Are you trying to... Mr. Kitsurak? Don't just jump to the folder. That's not... It's Harry. You feel like a Dubois. Sure. I... <sighs> okay, we're almost Mr. back. Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to... But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. He doesn't really seem to know any more about it. Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I don't really feel like it, now. That's why I like you, Harry. A good man knows both his strength. Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would... Yes. He's probably just making a guess based on your recent activity. Ah. This trans... I find that... I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. As you look at the folder... There we go. Kitsurak ...covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an official folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Can you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on the tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare. The man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I've also studied the footprints at the crime scene. They're all workers' boots. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. Ah! I slammed my knee into my desk as I was, like, shifting. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big, impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. As you can see, uh, there's a lot for me to not like about this guy. 
Well, let's talk about my lost gun then. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. The gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored it in that you pawned it. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martin Ames. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Does this mean that if I do things for you, I will get my gun back? Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We had Pew, you had Buzz. I met Joyce, the company representative, by the way. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? We're all trying to do what's best for Martin A's here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. And with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. So what happened to the previous negotiator? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you not let an ally like why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You did call him a slur. Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Joyce said that the previous union leader vanished under cir uh, suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Funny, Joyce didn't mention that. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. That much is true. His heart truly is in it. Though you wouldn't think so by looking at him. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Everhart, George thinks that the Union is lowballing her. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Okay. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? 
It was nice telling him about her right now. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Kulsavand crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers of you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Well, I'm gonna leave now. We might talk again later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Uh, thanks. I was actually wondering how I was supposed to get out. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Cool. I guess. Giant novelty check. Jeez. 77 points. Okay. And I'm, like, butting right up against, like, how long I could even, like, stay here before I have to, like, head out. That is a locked item right there. I will definitely be back for you later. Did this change at all? You're back before the cargo container. Okay. So, uh, two things. One, uh, we... We've basically done everything we can up here, so we just have to basically head back and around. Two, we actually managed to get over here without having to, uh, interact with Measurehead. Very nice. Uh, three. Okay, three. Uh, we actually got a lot done for just the first half of this day. I'm very happy about that. And finally, I really have to go. Uh, just because, like, I'm, like, butting up to getting late for work. Uh... Did I actually list it as endurance run wheat? Okay. Okay. We'll just save that in case I do some like meandering around later. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to be back next week to do this again. Oh my gosh. I have now effectively gotten back up to where I was. Like on my first playthrough. I'm actually very happy. Uh, but we're now at day... But now we're at day two, so... Very cool. Anyway, I'll see all y'all later. Goodbye.